Welcome back to the channel. I'm really glad you're here. I'm heading over to a friend's house who had a tree fall down on her horse fence. Um, she twisted her ankle last week and when I saw that, uh, I sent her a message and said, hey, if you need anything, uh, be sure to ask. And uh, it's really neat that she accepted the offer. She reached out and said, hey, can you come over with your chainsaw and cut this tree off my fence? And um, I really appreciate it when someone accepts the offer of help. So remember that, you know, if you ever need help, it's hard to ask, but if someone offers, don't be too stubborn to accept the offer because it means just as much to the person who's doing the favor for you. So I think this is a relatively small tree and shouldn't take long, but I thought I'd grab a few shots of it and share a few thoughts. So let's check it out. Well, here's the tree. Basically, it fell on this smooth wire fence. Looks like it's actually a couple of cedar trees. So what we'll do is just cut the tops off and then cut it close to the wire and pull out what we can. Looks like this one was has some fence staples, so we'll have to pull those out too. Boy, I'll tell you, if you ever had a pet guinea pig or hamster, it's nothing like the smell of cedar chips to bring you right back to that time in your life. Now I anticipated there might be a little bit of fence repair here today, so I brought my fencing pliers and uh, there are a few staples here that have to be removed from this old cedar tree. Let me tell you, if you have anything to do with fencing on your property, pick up a set of these multi-purpose fence pliers. They're really, really handy. They've got lots of ways you can grab wire and twist wire. This is a hook. You can pull out your fence staples with it got a little hammer end which I don't use too often but often what you do is you have a separate hammer and you can tap on this part of the tool to drive out the staples so really rather than using this as a hammer using this as like an anvil surface to hit on to drive this in and pull out the staples so it's a super handy tool I'll leave a link in the description to uh, one of these tools and I definitely recommend you keep one with you almost all the time when you're on your property Yeah, you can just pry that staple right out. Now further down the fence line here, there's another old dead tree that the fence was stapled to. We're just gonna pull those out too. Stubborn one. Now I was raised with the mindset of, if you're gonna do something, do it right, or at least do it to the best of your ability. That always makes me think of that old country music song by Vern Gosden. If you're gonna do me wrong, do it right. Well, anyway, I anticipated that some of this fencing would be down from the tree, so I brought some of these old T-posts that I had laying around, 
I'm going to put a couple along the fence just to raise it up, even it out, and make sure that the horses can't just step over it. If you've never used any of these T-posts, they're really handy. They're, of course, called a T-post because of the T-shape of the metal. And you drive them into the ground. They have these raised nubs that the fence lays on, and then you wrap a wire around the fence, and that holds it tight to the T-post. Now these, you need a post driver to drive them in the ground because they are pretty high. You can use a sledgehammer, but it's best to use a tool made specifically for driving posts. Now, they make tools designed specifically for driving these posts, basically a slide hammer. I don't have one of those tools, but I made one. Basically, this is an old sledgehammer head welded to a piece of inch and a half pipe. And the way this works is you slide it over the post, put the post where you want it, then use this as a slide hammer to drive the post in. I'll show you. I've got about a 20 foot span here between these two trees where the fence was nailed to the trees. So I'm gonna put two of these T-posts and just space them out evenly. Now rule of thumb is put the T-post on the opposite side of the fence. So that way if you have animals and they push against the fence, they're not pushing the wire away from the T-post, they're pushing it against the T-post. So we're gonna put it on this side because the horses on this side. Take my homemade slide hammer. Now it's best to level the post, plumb it, level it. I guess it's plumb both ways, right? This way and that way. But I don't have my level, so I'm just gonna eye it up. Very nice. Now we'll take the wire and we'll distribute it. Let's find the top wire. We'll attach it and we'll even these wires out all the way down. And I'll show you how to affix them to the post. So here's the top wire. We're going to place it right above one of these metal nubs. The fence is relatively level going across. And then there's a piece of wire that wraps around the fencing wire and around the post. Now, these posts usually come with uh, those pieces of wire, but I could not find them in my cluttered garage. See what I did there? So I brought some of this heavy wire. It's like eighth inch wire. I'm going to cut a piece about five, six inches long with my handy fencing multi-tool and you take the wire from behind like this let's start with a bend here basically make a hook So you're hooking onto that wire, then you're wrapping around the post. Notice this hook is bent in the upright position. So we want to wrap the wire around. And the next one is going to go in the down position. That way they can't fall off. Just wrap that around. Now this one I want to tighten up. Wrap that around like so. And that holds the fence and the wire. It can't slide up or down because it hits these nubs. Then we move on right on down the line.
Well, that does it for this project. I really appreciate you watching today. And remember, it's not only important to offer to help your neighbor, but it's equally important to accept help when it's offered to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.